Okay, so you excitedly enter a triathlon, but then you find out that it's over a unusually challenging, hilly and technical terrain. So naturally you then debate as to whether you should use a road bike or a TT or triathlon bike, if you have the luxury to choose, of course. I'll be honest, I have been in a similar position before myself and with this growing trend for more challenging courses over hilly and technical terrains, more and more of you seem to be asking similar questions. Which is faster over those types of courses? And actually in the Ironman 70.3 World Championships in Nice last year, there was a divide of opinion even amongst the pros. So for today's video, Orbea has stepped in to help. They provide us with their brand new Ordu TT and triathlon bike, as well as their Orca road bike. And we're gonna be putting them up against each other to see how they fare over these differing terrains, as well as helping you make those decisions for future events. There have always been hilly and technical courses in triathlon, but as I mentioned already, there really does seem to be an increasing trend towards these more challenging courses with more hilly and technical sections in them. Just as a channel, we've really noticed that we've been receiving more and more questions from athletes wondering whether we would recommend they use a road bike or a triathlon bike for said course. So I think it's about time we made a video about this. So I'm gonna first off, take a look through our options. Here we have a bike that most of you would be familiar with, a road bike, and it is the Orbea Orca. The benefits of a road bike are they're typically considered to be more comfortable, particularly if you're a beginner. They also tend to be lighter, which means you don't have to carry quite as much weight up hills. Also, their handling is often considered to be better, which means they deal better on those technical sections and even descents. The disadvantages, however, of a road bike are their aerodynamics, which are typically worse than a triathlon bike. In this instance, I'm on the brand new Orbea Ordu triathlon bike. And the main benefits of a triathlon bike are predominantly is aerodynamics, meaning that it requires less energy to travel at the same speed or the same energy and more speed, whichever way you want to look at it. And this new iteration of the Ordu claims to have shaved a staggering 11.5% of drag across the entire bike, which Orbea says took over 2,500 hours of calculations to achieve. And it's things like this super clean front end that really allow them to achieve this. You notice that the stem, the base bar and the forks are nicely integrated to really smoothen out that airflow. And on many new triathlon bikes like this one, they really are designed with triathlon in mind with integrated storage and setup options to help you during a triathlon. In this instance, we've got an integrated toolbox and hydration system down towards the bottom bracket, along with a newly designed down tube, which also results in a 2.9% reduction in drag. Typically though the disadvantages of a triathlon or TT bike are they tend to be heavier and bulkier which means that they may not handle hillier or technical sections quite as well. As I say typically that is true and yeah okay the bike I'm on right now is heavier than the road bike with me but it is remarkably light it weighs just 1130 grams but either way there are still some clear differences between the two bikes so which should you choose? Well, to help you with this, we need to get a little sciencey for a second. Now, speeds below approximately 15 kilometers an hour, our greatest resistance comes from rolling resistance. As we exceed 15 kilometers an hour, aerodynamic drag takes over and becomes our greatest resistance and increases exponentially beyond 20 kilometers an hour. In fact, by the time you hit 50 kilometers an hour, if you can manage that, it's pretty much around 90% of our power that goes into overcoming aerodynamic drag. So that is why, as triathletes, we look towards aerodynamic triathlon bikes to help us. But what about the hills? Well, obviously the biggest worry on hills is the weight. And as mentioned before, typically triathlon bikes are slightly heavier than road bikes. But that's where things get interesting because for a pro rider, research has shown that aerodynamics still holds the advantage over weight up to gradients of around seven and a half percent. Obviously that drops slightly for your average amateur rider to around four and a half percent, simply due to the fact that they're traveling at slower speeds. Obviously those numbers do vary slightly from individual to individual, but in essence, all the evidence suggests that unless you're doing a crazily hilly course or a summit finish, a lightweight non-aerodynamic road bike maybe isn't warranted. And assuming there are some flat sections in the course, more often than not, the gains made on those flat sections with a triathlon bike will far outweigh any of those small gains made on the hilly technical sections with a lightweight road bike. In fact, to prove my point further, 
Today I'm going to pit these bikes up against each other. The brand new Ordu, the same model, ridden to a Kona win and by Andrew Starkovic to numerous Ironman bike course records against the lightweight road bike, the Orca. Although now with a slight modification with some clip-on aero bars, as most people would for triathlons. So for this, I'm riding the bikes over the same four kilometer flat segment whilst holding the same power of 300 watts for each. And then we'll compare the times. So there we go. It was 5.58 for the road bike, 5.42 for the triathlon bike, which is 16 second difference, which would equate to about 12 minutes over a 180 kilometer Ironman bike leg, should the course be perfectly flat, of course. But I appreciate there's a lot more to it than that. There's the comfort, the handling, the feel, and so on. So I'm gonna take this a step further. I'm going to also compare them over all our efforts over a technical section, a climb, and why not a descent? Whilst we're at it. Of course, this is merely a bit of fun, but will hopefully provide us with some good food for thought. I am, however, genuinely intrigued to see how the triathlon bike fares. It's clearly fast, but in this instance, the Orbea is surprisingly comfortable too. It's also Orbea's claim of improved handling that really interests me. They've apparently managed this by increasing the reach, but also its ergonomics and weight. Well, that's not a total surprise. The road bike was fractionally faster, but what is, is how close those times were. When we compare that to the huge margin over the flat segment where the TT bike was substantially faster, well, unless the course you're choosing to do is insanely hilly, it's a no brainer really. The triathlon bike will in most cases be a lot faster. However, do make sure you do your course research. Also, it's worth noting, triathlon bikes do take a little getting used to. That said, this new Ordu has been an absolute dream to ride. This is more or less my first ride on it and I've been super comfortable. And I think that just shows how much attention and how much work Orbea have put into striking that balance between aerodynamics, but also the handling and the comfort. So well done Orbea. I would love to ride this bike all day long, but I think that's all for today's video. If you would like to see me racing this bike, on my own solo against Hank and Connor from GCN in a two-up on their road bikes. Head on over to GCN now. If you've enjoyed today's video, give it a like and don't forget to head on over to GTN social media channels. Give them a follow. And if you're not subscribed, hit that button just down below.